Uh, hello. Hi. Hello, everybody, and thanks for being here. Um, <clears throat> thanks to Anna and Maria for inviting me to, to give this talk. So, some years ago, I started to study the world of modern ruins, and I am particularly interested in how this um, yeah, how these buildings lay somewhere in between the assumption of failure and an increasing aesthetic appreciation. So today my presentation deals with a very particular type of modern ruins, which are unfinished public works in Italy. And well, I'd say that um, my aim is to explore how these buildings are increasingly becoming cultural assets. So first of all, we should ask, how did I get to know this case? And the truth is that um, I was reading one day the newspaper and I found this article about a group of Italian artists called Alterazioni Video, who in 2007 had mapped around 400 unfinished public works in all Italy. These buildings have been erected in the last 50 to 60 years. Uh, obviously, the reasons behind this phenomenon lie or point to political corruption and the mafia, but I will talk about that later. Uh, what's important to know for now is that, according to the artist, this set of unfinished buildings uh, could be viewed as a formal architectural style the so-called Incomputo Siciliano. And though obviously Sicily and the southern parts of Italy are more affected than the north, as you can see, uh, it's important to keep in mind that Incomputo Siciliano refers to a national reality. So, so an unfinished building located no matter where in Italy, it could be considered Incomputo Siciliano. So, in Computo Siciliano is uh, an architectural style, and through this reinterpretation, it is also an artistic project and a social project in its own. So, the object, the artist object, is to change the negative perception of these buildings and turn it into something positive. Uh, although, in principle, this could sound as a joke. The truth is that In Computer Siciliano has been presented in dozens of art exhibitions and architecture workshops. And moreover, the artists just last year, they initiated a crowdfunding campaign and they raised more than 25,000 pounds to edit a book that will be presented next month in Palermo. But unfortunately for the artist, their book is not going to be the first book about Incomputo Siciliano, because I actually did my PhD on this. So, uh, in sum, what I did was to embrace the artist's argument and, uh, and develop a complete study about Incomputo Siciliano while relating it to the main topics and issues around modern ruins. Mm. So my aim is to contribute to the revalorization of incompletion, and then this is a presentation which is not about unfinished public works in Italy. This is a presentation that talks about Incomputo Siciliano as an, artist, as, as an artistic reaction to unfinished public works in Italy, and we have to keep that in mind. So I divided my presentation in five different parts. So let's begin with the first of these, where I justify the suitability of referring to In Computo Siciliano as a new typology of modern ruins. And modern ruins always hold a critical message. And in this case, the critical meaning is that these buildings are not an accident, but they are the product of a successful white collar crime. We find two major types of unfinished public works. We have infrastructures, like roads or dams, and we also have social buildings, like schools, hospitals, 
or like this theater here that has remained half finished for 35 years now. Uh, in terms of form, these buildings are normally quite mundane, though this is actually a very sophisticated exception, I would say. Most of these buildings are located in the peripheries and out, outskirts of town, so it's very easy for the authorities to neglect and ignore them. So basically it's out of sight, out of mind, right? And these buildings, they all basically share the same materiality, which is always concrete, wild vegetation, and corrugated iron. Normally, a ruin is a ruin. Uh, it's a place where there was once an activity and it precisely becomes a ruin because it was abandoned and it has no longer maintenance. But in this case, uh, however, the, a place becomes a ruin even if it never had any activity at all. Yet these buildings are, in the sense of Robert Smithson, ruins in reverse. And let me quote, this is to say, all the new constructions that would eventually be built. This is the opposite of the romantic ruin because the buildings don't fall into ruin after they are built, but rather rise into ruin before they are built. But beyond these poetic terms, uh, there is a dark history to tell. And the truth is that after the Second World War, the Italian government initiated a modernization program under the premise that new buildings would automatically generate prosperity. So then we found lack of coordination and sort of local proud made that if you had a stadium in your town, well, I wanted to have a bigger stadium in my town, regardless whether this was necessary or not. Uh, the construction sector offers jobs, and obviously politicians are expecting something back, which is votes. Uh, this is, uh, uh, there is, this is a system that uh, has no uh, long-term perspective, and the use and management of the buildings is uh, simply a secondary issue because they are actually uh, to provide an economic benefit only while they are being built. So then we have mafia, political corruption, disappearance of funds. This is a systematic model where the money fills the pockets of a minority. Knowing this, it's impossible not to establish a connection uh, with the whole set of unfinished housing that the recent economic crisis has just produced in countries like Ireland or Spain, which is my home country. Um, the economic models and the time frames may vary, but the behavior of the society have been pretty much the same, which is a blind faith in construction, the illusion of being rich when you are not, and a lack of ethical values to stop that. So by remaining unfinished, these buildings have the potential to represent their societies, being this as uncomfortable as it can be. Anyway, we have now a critical sense of the Italian case, but I reiterate my presentation is about in computer Siciliano as a more positive vision. So let me jump to the second part, where I analyze in computer Siciliano as a change of perception towards ruination. Uh, some scholars consider that presenting a modern ruin in a beautiful way is a way of trivializing the social problems behind the ruin. Opposed to this, I argue that the aesthetization of decay is a first step to engage with people, leading to the building's eventual revalorization and reactivation. Regarding the architectural paradigm where form follows function, let's think for a second. What is a building 
that has the form of a stadium if it has never been used as a stadium? Well, according to the artists, according to Alteration Video, when deprived from any function, an unfinished public work can only be a piece of art. And this renaming uh, lies in Duchamp's ready-made tradition, where a simple urinal is a piece of art only if you label it as a fountain and you display it in a museum. So similarly, uh, Alterazione Video in Computer Siciliano is proposing an architectural style uh, that conveys a change of perception. Um, we don't even have to touch the buildings because the artistic component of In Computer Siciliano is just our gaze. This was Alterazione Video's intention when they asked the famous Italian photographer Gabriele Basilico to portray some of these buildings. As you can see, there is an evident contradiction uh, between uh, the way that such a building is portrayed in a very beautiful manner and the truly problematic reality to which it truly belongs. But the effectiveness of in computer Siciliano precisely lies in ironically leaving this critical message aside. So in computer Siciliano is a radical positivization of an obvious problem. The buildings have been neglected and ignored for decades, but in computer Siciliano is an original way of denouncing a situation without explicitly denouncing the situation. Among the several artistic practices that have somehow inspired in Computer Siciliano, I've chosen the so-called Museum of Modern Art in Cyrus, or MoMAs. In 1993, the German artist Martin Kippenberger came upon this incomplete slaughterhouse in the Greek island of Cyrus uh, that remind him some sort of 20th century acropolis. Kippenberger declared the structure to be his own museum, uh, where he even organized exhibitions. So basically, <clears throat> what Kippenberger is doing here, he's using the archaeological context in which this site is located, Greece, the Greek islands, uh, to perceive the structure as something higher. And similarly, in Computer Siciliano is proposing an architectural style in a country like Italy with so much architectural tradition. So it is a provocation, but it is also an immediate way of communicating. Alteration Video has carried out some artistic operations like sculptures, collage, performances, or even a short film where this is just the, the trailer where where amateur actors were locals. So, in some works that derive from the idea of Fin Computer Siciliano are a demonstration of how art can use the aestheticizing aspects of modern drawings uh, to build up a critical discourse with engaging expectations. Detroit has always been the paradigmatic example around the controversy uh, around the aestheticization of modern drawings. Uh, many scholars consider that this, these beautiful pictures like, like this one are contra counterproductive because they hide the social, political, and economic problems behind abandonment. Uh, however, in Computer Siciliano shows how the aestheticization of modern drawing can indeed contribute to put a phenomenon on the agenda. And the truth is that after In Computer Siciliano, lots of media and researchers, including myself, uh, have investigated and have focused our attention on a topic that had remained invisible for so long. So far, I've briefly, I briefly mentioned concepts like irony and provocation, and 
these are indeed key concepts in order to understand the new meanings that in computer Siciliano is able to offer in terms of heritage. Because as I state in part three, in computer Siciliano is presented in such a conservative way, which is an architectural style, which is no mean fit, it's presented in such a conservative way that it ends up being subversive. Uh, the artists have even advocated for the creation of the In Computer Siciliano Archaeological Park to be located in Giare, which is a, a medium-sized town in Sicily that has the honor of being the capital of In Computer Siciliano for having the highest density of incompletion in Italy. This is nine unfinished public works for a population of 28,000 people. Uh, so though Altera Video have even done a touristic map, uh, obviously the archeological park has not been legalized yet. Uh, but what's important here is that the project proposes the, or the monumentalization of a, ser a set of places of which a society would normally feel ashamed of. So suddenly uh, these places move from waste to something that deserve to be visited. Uh, just, uh, these buildings, as you can see here on the right margin, they are presented like old and beautiful relics, just like ancient ruins. Uh, but this is this is certainly a provocation, uh, but this provocation does not contemplate to freeze the park or to freeze these buildings in time. It is actually a matter of finding new alternative uses while respecting the unfinished materiality of the sites. This approach has uh, very interesting heritage connotations, and the first of these is regarding temporality. So is Giarres unfinished swimming pool, which has remained unfinished since 1985, old enough to be heritage? Well, I guess if we compare it with Giarres Cathedral, definitely not. But as Mark Auger notes, today we live in the era of super modernity, where everything passes faster. So actually, a swimming pool that has remained unfinished for 30 years is actually a very old unfinished swimming pool. While three decades in the traditional historical spectrum may not be too much, three decades of super modernity is a lot. And this is the ambivalent meaning of In Computer Siciliano in terms of temporality. These buildings are new and old at the same time depending on the idea of time that we use. In a project like this one, memory and aesthetics are extremely connected. Uh, and here there's a true paradox, because on one hand, the park does not aim to be a site to explicitly interpret, interpret mafia or corruption, but on the other, it is expected that these buildings could remain pretty much as they are, making evident, evident such memorialization. Locals know nothing about these sites because after decades living and coexisting with them, they have excluded these sites from their attention. So there is a need for recovering, but at the same time, it's not a matter of stigmatizing a particular society. So here's the ambivalent meaning regarding memory. The park, uh, the project proposes what Rodney Harrison calls forgetting to, re to remember, remembering to forget, or the need to leave certain things unsaid so a society could move on. And the same is applicable to aesthetics. One could perfectly say that these buildings are ugly, uh, but considering the change of taste that in Computer Siciliano is suggesting, uh, here we could better say that ugliness is not the opposite of beauty, but an integral part of it. 
in 2010, the artist organized the In Computer Siciliano Festival uh, to promote the park. And for three days, they organized performances, concerts, uh, theaters, well, reappropriating and using the sites finally. Uh, by the way, this was a great success in terms of attendance. And this is a demonstration of uh, not an, of an elitist heritage approach, but of a critical heritage approach in which value is given from bottom up and once more an engaging aspect is essential. So obviously, in Computer Siciliano does not work as traditional sites of tourists and indeed in part four, I recount a trip that during one week I did in Sicily with two colleagues of mine in order to visit a dozen of unfinished public works. And based on my unconventional touristic experience, I end up considering these sites as catalysts for aesthetic experiences. I have elaborated several short videos, though I'm afraid that today we will only have time to watch one of them. And with these videos, my intention is to mediate the feelings that one can feel, the feeling and emotions that one can feel inside these buildings. But first, I must say that in general, the fascination for modern ruins comes from outside, while locals do not value them too much. The truth is that where I see a peaceful atmosphere, uh, people living nearby could probably see a place where they would never go. But this is an interesting reciprocity because the fact that these places are pretty much deserted is what allows me to simply sit there and relax. And not only that, in an unfinished public work, you can walk into any corridor, you can jump, you can go to any floor. The space has no limitations and the main feeling is total freedom. Unlike traditional touristic sites, obviously here I don't have to pay an entry ticket. Uh, there is no surveillance because, well, basically there is nothing to take or break. And in some, these buildings, and according to Eden Source theories, truly function as sites for adventure and play. So we have remoteness, uh, solitude, freedom. All these feelings uh, made me experience unfinished works beyond the visual, involving father senses. These sites are aesthetical, but I want to move beyond the previous discussion on whether a site is ugly or beautiful, because here I'm using aesthetics in its original Greek perception, which is everything that can be felt through full embodiment. This has served me well to value unfinished public works in their current ruin condition, because I ended up thinking that being like that, being ruined, they have the capacity to trigger emotions, making evident my own capacity to feel those emotions. And since I admit that it is pretty hard to uh, verbalize these concepts, I'm showing the video that I prepared for today.
but the inevitable question now is what to do with all these buildings? And well, according to the artist, we have four possibilities. We could actually finish them, we could demolish them, we could simply not do anything, or we could, op we could opt for finding new alternative uses. So the first of these possibilities, I won't talk about that today, which is finishing the buildings. I think this is a good possibility as long as finishing the building actually uh, fits the necessities of a certain society. Uh, but it, doing this would eradicate the interesting connotations that I perceive in, in incompletion. So moreover, not nearly every building will be finished because actually uh, they are quite obsolete. Uh, so this is unlikely to happen. So anyway, we'll, let's start with demolition. And this is the unfinished sports hall in the city of Comiso in, in Sicily as well. The building is 30 years old, of course never functioned. And in, two, in summer 2016, Alteracioni Video, they did a workshop with the intention of demolishing the building because this hill here, where the building is, is actually hollow, so beneath there is a cave. So they were thinking that it could be good to, to create a void and trying to reconnect the top of the hill with the surrounding town. Of course, this has not happened, but it's quite remarkable because we are talking about valuing a piece of architecture through its very absence. And by making demolition a sort of spectacle, we could even talk about an eventual act of iconoclasm through which we recognize the building's importance. But obviously, demolishing costs money, and viewing the huge quantity of buildings that are standing in the middle of nowhere, uh, demolishing may not even be a practical solution. So I use the, the concept of, uh, which has been coined by, uh, by Caitlin de Silvis, which is entropic heritage, to define a way of preserving without preserving. I find this suitable for in computer Siciliano because considering that the popular acceptance of these buildings has increasingly raised after the building's ruin condition, yet why should we interfere in this process? And importantly, this wouldn't mean to, to simply keep ignoring the buildings, but Let's say finding a way between care and carelessness, it's rather a manner of valuing ruins le while letting them to rot. Among the several architectural workshops dealing with in computer Siciliano, a particular idea has always been present, which is finding new uses while respecting their unfinished materiality. And this obviously resonates from which I said before uh, in the archaeological park. So here we see uh, several proposals that students have imagined to reappropriate an unfinished overpass in the city of Naples. As you can see, it's all old proposals contemplate to leave the structure pretty much as it is. So only minimal intervention would be required. So. It's interesting because it, this approach uh, is considered to slightly transform the ruin. So to conclude with some final remarks, I would say that Italy did not have to suffer a uh, sudden economic crisis to have a, their own collection of unfinished works. It has rather been a constant dropping for decades. So it seems clear that every economic model produces ruins when politicians confuse economic growth with social welfare. And this is important because the Italian case demonstrates that inaction towards incompletion, and this is a warning to Ireland or Spain, uh, could only produce all the ruins. 
Aesthetic approaches to modern drawings are not new and they will not cease in the future, so I think that we better regard them as a constructive contribution, as I'd say. Uh, one could say that alteracioni video's approach is ironic and superficial, and I'd say yes it is, but that is precisely its strength. In Computer Siciliano works as an Umberto Eco's open work. It is up to us to build up further debates because there is more than aesthetics beyond aesthetics. I wonder whether, wasn't it crazy to talk about industrial heritage or industrial archeology span in the 60s? Well, I guess with In Computer Siciliano we may be witnessing the birth of a new type of heritage which is unfinished heritage. It is old and new, it, it forgets and remembers, and it could be ugly, but it also could be beautiful. And, but if it's all about generating a more positive identity, for sure, society will have to be self-critical and learn to laugh at itself. Researchers are usually required to take certain distance towards our of subjects of study, and okay, I see that, that is fine. But I wonder whether there are moments in which it's important to look inside and, and tell what one is experiencing. I find this extremely valuable and qualitative. And after all, cultural significance is not uh, inherent in the object, but is projected onto the object by the subject. None of the described strategies to deal with incompletion is a global and final solution in its own. Uh, maybe the best is to opt for perceiving unfinished public works as a laboratory in which to experiment. I'd say trial and error without fear and failure because there is no need to rush. After all, these buildings have been standing here for quite some time. That's all. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Pablo. Um, does anybody have any questions just now? Hi, Pablo. Um, you hinted that there was corruption at the heart of many of these projects. I was interested to know if that meant that some of these buildings were designed in the full knowledge that they were not going to be completed, or were they all oblivious to their incompletion? I think that's a very interesting question because it basically it addresses one question, which is the intention and the voluntary ideas to proceed with something. Uh, if we think about, obviously, this joke and provocation of the in computer siciliano functions because they are trying to say it is an architectural style. Uh, obviously, behind an architectural style, there is an intention. If we think about Baroque or Renaissance, it all has its own design and stylistic patterns which actually makes them style. So when we talk about style here, it basically, uh, it's, uh, our mind is like about to blow because it's, we could say that they were not designed to be like that. They were not intended to be unfinished they were intended to be normal buildings, uh, but because they are unfinished, they end up being quite remarkable, or at least special. They are simply different from the norm. Uh, is there an intention behind that? Certainly, if there is an intention, it's not an artistic intention. It's an, it's an intention based on uh, politics, uh, 
certain dysfunctionality. Um, and I am sure that uh, there are certain, I mean, the main case here is that the, in many cases, it's not a big deal if a building remains unfinished. You got the funding normally from higher administrative layers and you got that funding and that funding has to be spent. Is there an intention towards incompletion for that? Probably not a direct intention, uh, but when you start uh, hiring dubious companies and keeping the money for you, then there is a long tradition of the mafia networks and, and, and the concrete companies in Italy. So uh, there may be uh, moments and cases in which simply not accomplishing a building, it's probably a full intention from the very beginning, but I think it's more appropriate to say that the whole model works in a way that let's just start the building, let's just spend this money, and whatever happens will be fine because the money has been spent. Is the building finished? Okay. Is the building unfinished? Whatever. The money got spent. That's it. I think it's some Mediterranean logic, probably. I don't know if you guys from, from Scotland are able to understand this weird perspective that uh, obviously I'm not saying that I support that approach. I'm just saying that for me it's, it sounds logical even it's if, if it's completely illogical. <laughs> Hi, um, I just wanted to ask uh, an environmental question. Um, the actual process of making cement um, produces a lot of emissions, greenhouse emissions, just the process. So I'm just wondering, as we come towards zero carbon emissions, um, how, if these are coming to an end, what kind of materials are we looking towards to fill that space. So if these, these are unfinished cement buildings, mm -hmm. how are we moving towards that zero emissions in terms of maybe um, envisioning a different kind of construction? I mean, to be honest, I've never thought about that. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's uh, you do a PhD and you think that everything is finished, but it's like this building, it's unfinished. There are always new topics to talk about. Um, I don't know to what extent the construction with concrete is, is actually a thing here in Scotland, uh, because I've seen several buildings that you guys built here, and actually, even if the building is not too big, you use steel pillars and steel structure. Uh, I don't know if the concrete thing is uh, sort of tra uh, construction tradition here. Uh, definitely, uh, in at least in Spain and Italy, it seems to be the case. Obviously, when there's these buildings were built, there was not these environmental concerns as we have it today. Uh, I wonder uh, if we had to uh, reappropriate them or trying to somehow finish them or providing them new, with new uses. Um, I really, uh, I always thought that, and I have discussed that with the artists and all the participants in the workshops, that I think the best would be to opt for, for minimal interventions that are always reversible. So trying to use materials and, and, uh, and a sort of sensibility uh, towards the structure, which is already built, and, and try to use softer materials uh, that may always or could always provide you the possibility to, to, 
to step back and, 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 and let the structure as it was from the very beginning. I think, uh, obviously, in that sense, we, you would never include concrete again. So so, somehow you are sacra, sacrally sizing or you are like seeing the built structure as it is now as a sort of sacred structure, uh, but at the same time there is a sort of will to produce some additions to it, uh, but not using concrete anymore, hopefully. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Babu. Thank you.